Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my review of the, uh, <laughs> the series finale of The Strain on FX, which was called The Last Stand. And, uh, you know, I did work tonight, uh, so I had to catch the uh, very first replay that I could when I got home tonight. And, you know, I was very, very excited for this. Um, you know, also nervous, of course, too, because this is a show... Um, that I've been, uh, you know, following since the very start. You know, I watched the first episode when it premiered. I've reviewed every single episode since then. Um, proud to say that, by the way. A strain, incredible show. Uh, very, very overlooked and underrated. Um, I honestly think parts of it have been better than The Walking Dead over the years. Um, I don't want to make this a comparison, but I just wish I'd gotten more attention than it did. I know FX is a smaller network, though, but... To me, it is definitely one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, so going in again, I was very excited, of course, to see how they would conclude the story, um, but also nervous because I do care about quite a few characters. Um, and also, you know, it's still sad to see it end. You know, again, I've enjoyed it for so long, it's going to be different not having it around. But I think this was the right time to end it, just in terms of seasons and everything. It felt like a natural uh, length, you know, without bleeding it dry. Um... You know, I've talked about that before, though. Uh, also, I'll just show this real quick before I get into the episode. And my voice may sound a little bit weird right now. Like, uh, I'm bored or tired. And I'm, I am tired. <laughs> um, but, please, uh, don't uh, misunderstand it. I'm not kind of talking lowly like this out of boredom or disappointment, really. Um, more so just out of how certain things in this episode kind of affected me. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. I just want to show this thing again. I was at the Flashback Horror Convention in Chicago back in August, and I showed this in my uh, video on that, but I want to show it again. Um, this is a prop that sent out to a lot of uh, the press when the strain, the summer before the strain premiered, I think its first season. Um, of course, uh, you know, it's meant to like replicate Miriam's heart. Um, of course, the Drakian's wife. Um, just looks really, really cool. Um, there are only, f you know, like, a few of these. I'm not sure how many they ever sent out, but this is still, like, a really, really, really rare and hard-to-find thing if you ever do. Um, but, yeah, just really cool, and, uh, very happy to have it now. Um, but, uh, yeah, so this episode, I, I liked it quite a bit. Um, yeah, I wouldn't go so far as to say it was the best episode of the series. I don't think so. Um... And certain things I felt like could have been a little bit longer than they were. Not that I needed another season, just that I felt like certain scenes could have uh, been like a minute or two longer or something like that. But, you know, those are kind of gripes, I guess. But I'll get into more uh, specifics about that in a minute here. Um, but despite that, I do think overall it was a fitting end, uh, for the most part, all around, as far as the characters and the story as a whole. Um, this episode, of course, had a pretty simple premise. Um, Quinlan and Fed ending up getting this new idea to lure the Master to them instead of trying to track him down, um, trap him in this underground area that had been worked on um, so it wouldn't destroy all of New York City when they set the bomb off, which I thought was pretty good. Um, you know, Quinlan is to uh, you know, make the Master go into this elevator shaft as they're fighting and you know, lure him down there, and so they're all locked down there once the cables are blown. Um, so I thought that was pretty good, um, made a little different, made for a uh, different, uh, location for, like, a finale than you were probably expecting, you know, there's no, like, uh, it's not like a big city finish, you know, although there are Strigori marching the streets and everything, a lot of that is just talked about, and some people would be upset about that, they didn't see more scale, but, you know, Strain did have a lower budget, so they do what they can, um, but we did see some of that at the beginning when they were, uh, you know, kind of surrounded on the streets and such, which I still thought was pretty good, um, also, before I forget to talk about it, there was also a little flashback to uh, the time of season one. Um, we see F, you know, still with his hair, although, you know, Corey Stoll is still wearing a hat, you know, so he doesn't doesn't have to look as good <laughs> um, as his initial uh, wig in season one or whatever it was. Him and Fed are having coffee, uh, you know, served by uh, the professor, you know, Satrakian. It was really nice to see David Bradley again. Although the scene itself didn't feel like fully necessary, didn't really like fill in or make anything feel uh, like it had more weight than it already did. 
Um, but just for the sake of seeing Bre uh, David Bradley again, you know, Satraki and I get it, you know, it was fine. Even just to have a conversation with him from back then, um, I thought that was good. You also have uh, Nora mentioned and everything, you know, Dr. Martinez, so. It would have been nice to actually see her too, me and Maestro, but, you know, it is what it is. But it's still a nice set that I decided to go for something like that anyway. Um, you know, so uh, the plan is basically successful, you know, uh, some of uh, Gus's men are killed, you know, his gang that was fending off the Strigori, um, I guess is able to make it back to the rest of the group. And we basically see the plan is fairly uh, successful for the most part. Um, Quinlan is able to tackle the master into the elevator shaft and, you know, have the cables blown to go down there. And before that, though, uh, Fett, you know, he is very set on being one to have to detonate it below, um, because Quinlan would have his hands too full. Um, so yeah, a good scene or two between him and Dutch. You know, see there's definitely still feelings between the two, which, you know, we know just ever since uh, Satrakian's death. Um, and I thought both uh, Kevin Durand and uh, Rui Genementis did really well in those scenes. Um, you know, although I didn't mind F and uh, Dutch together, you know, that was more so born out of what they were both going through at the time, whereas uh, Fett and Dutch, I think, actually had a real bond and uh, connection. Um, and I think, uh, you know, even F could see that in this uh, episode as well. And I think he already knew that, but still. Um, you know, she does have F to try and to talk him out of it, sort of. Um, but Fett, of course, is pretty set on it. You know, he's like Satrakian in that way, which I like, you know, how Satrakian is talked about on this episode, too. Um, but what ends up happening is, of course, uh, you know, with uh, Zack being there, F actually ends up deciding to take the detonator, and he, he's the one that gets sent down the other elevator shaft, you know, much to, uh, you know, you know Fett's dismay. Um, but, you know, that definitely sort of uh, mends things between F and uh, Fett, no question about it. You know, F being the one to uh, take that you know, and uh, go into that situation, you know, knowing he's not going to be coming back out. Um, you know, Fett and F are always really, really different, but I think uh, there's no way that Fett doesn't have respect for him now um, after doing that. Um, so I like that. And, and, you know, it was a fairly, you know, semi-slow building finale, I guess, um, you know, leading up to that point, but as soon as uh, F, you know, hit the dead, not the detonator, but, uh, you know, yeah, the detonator, you know, to blow the cable and send himself down there with the, the Master and uh, Zack, you know, along with uh, Quinlan, I thought that was the moment where it was like, oh shit, this is really good. <laughs> um, and then as far as the fight between uh, the Master and Quinlan, you know, I thought it was alright, you know, I, I actually didn't think it was quite as good as it could have been, I think there have been better fight or action sequences on the show. Um, you know, I, I seen a IGN's review. IGN's not a site to go always go by, by the way. <laughs> They've severely underscored the strain before. Um, but, you know, they mentioned how it's hard to keep up with it because uh, the, the master, at least Jonathan Hyde's master and uh, Quinlan look kind of similar from a distance. So the way they shot in, like a combined, the combined space it was, it's kind of hard to follow in, you know, who's who. You know, I was uh, keeping a close eye on it so I could tell you know, that Quinlan kind of had the armor played on where he had the guns and stuff. He, he, if you looked enough, you could tell who is who, but, you know, I thought it could have been filmed a little bit better than it was, maybe. You know, went by kind of fast. It didn't feel... I felt like they should have given Quinlan more of a moment than he had with that. Um, because Quinlan's definitely been a fan, fa fan favorite character ever since, you know, his first uh, live-action appearance in Season 2. Um... Uh, Quinlan, however, he's, you know, hit quite a bit, he's messed up quite a bit, but he does manage to tear out the Master's throat, which is cool. Um, you know, arguably, a, you know, potentially fatal blow there. Uh, but it leads into a direction all of us are kind of wondering about. Um, but before we get to that, um, let me talk about the final fate of Quinlan. Um, uh, that, that, uh, really shook me, you know, that, uh, you know, that got me quite a bit, actually, with what happened to Quinlan, you know. Yeah, he uh, delivered an arguably mortal or, you know, fatal blow to the Master there, you know, kind of screwing him over, at least for a while. Um, you know, and I'm sure he expected that F and uh, Zack would, you know, be the ones to do whatever they have to do, sort of that final self-sacrifice part of Satrakian's uh, final idea. Um, I'm sure Quinlan, you know, knew that as well. Um, but just to see the way the Master, you know, stomped, you know, Quinlan's head in, uh, 
you know, we didn't really see, you know, Quinlan's head, but we, you know, seen that the master stomping, you know, on it over and over, you know, we didn't see the effects it had on the head, but still knowing that happened and seeing that partially happen was hard to watch for me, you know, it, it definitely hurt, and I know some people would be a little bit, you know, bitter about that, but I guess it's a semi-realistic ending, and Quinlan knew what was hopefully still going to happen after that, so there's some, still some peace to be found, but, you know, still a very sad and you know, tragic ending for, uh, you know, a character that's been through so much. Um, I meant to do a predictions video, but I'm sorry I never got around to it, um, you know, for various reasons, but I always thought that Quinlan is going to die, you know, in the, you know, of course in the final part of it, but die knowing that the Master is going to die as well. Um, and I guess he kind of did in that way, but I wish I had been more of a triumphant type of moment for Quinlan, but I know he can't always get that. Uh, then as far as the, you know, the next few minutes, um, as much as the Quinlan thing uh, did kind of hurt me there, um, what happened to F really, it really gutted me, honestly. Um, you know, I love Satrakian. Satrakian, in, in, in a way, is, you know, sort of like the ultimate, you know, first hero of the show. Um, but F personally was my favorite character, um, so I was most uh, you know nervous and interested in what would happen with him. Um, and that final sequence, um, where Zack, you know, he is uh, you know pushed to tr you know shoot F, you know, at the master's bidding. Um, you know, of course Zack doesn't. And you know one thing with that, I was glad that they didn't you know try to fully re redeem Zack. I guess you know like. Uh, Fat had talked to F earlier, saying if there's like a chance, you know, he feels like there could be something mended between, you know, Zach and him, um, I should take it because, of course, he's uh, knowing what happened with him and his father and how they never really fixed things. So I got where that was coming from for Fat, but a lot of us just don't like Zach. But again, from like F and Fat's perspective, I kind of get it. Um, but I'm glad they didn't fully redeem Zach or try to make out to be good or, you know, uh, just uh, guilt free now or something, you know. Um, so I'm glad they didn't do it that way. Zach, you know, fortunately doesn't shoot F, which is good. Um, and this is the part that some people were uh, expecting was with uh, the master. Actually, it looks like he attempted to uh, switch hosts with uh, Zach, which is th something some people thought was going to happen earlier this season, but it does nearly happen um, until uh, F intervenes just before the master is f fully able to uh, put it through. Um, <coughs> F tackles the master to save Zack. All the sh- all the fucking- let me just say, all the fucking shit Zack has pulled for, you know, on his father, and what he's put him through, and what little fucking bastard he was. <laughs> F still has it within him to, uh, save his son from something like that, of course, as he should. And, oh, of course the master is able to overpower F, and he actually transfers himself into F's body, you know, making F the new host of the master. And I, <laughs> that just hit me. I was covering my mouth. I was, it really, really uh, floored me, but not in a good way, I guess. Um, that was really extremely hard for me to watch. Um, and uh, I don't know if you guys have read the books, um, but in the books, uh, Zack is you know taken over by the master. I believe I haven't read the, I haven't read them myself, but enough to know the differences between the show and the books. You know, I just find it interesting. Um, <laughs> you know, I get that they pulled it sort of a switcheroo there, um, but again, just to see that happen to F, it really really hurt. Um, I was glad that F was able to hang on for a few seconds there. Um, so you get sort of that slow, you know, sort of sad, emotional, somber music that... I've always loved that music on the show, I don't want to butcher it anymore. Um, you know, F's able to have a few last words with his son, um, you know, telling him he's the one that, you know, saved, you know, them there, I guess, you know, sort of, although I still argue that it was, uh, F, of course, saving Zack there and then taking it, you know, I was able to, uh, <laughs> you know, push things the way they should have, but at least Zack, you know, chose the right father in the end, I guess there's that. Um, 
So I have to able to hold on for a few seconds to tell Zach that. And the, the, this is one of the things I wish, besides the Quinlan stuff, I wish was a little bit longer. Um, I just wish there was like another minute or two before F was fully taken by the Master after that. I just would have liked a slightly uh, lengthier, you know, goodbye to F, to F. I think I think he deserved that. Um, like a longer conversation between him and Zach or something I think would have been really good. Um, but we get a little flicker of that, like I said, and then F is still able to show Zach, you know, to, you know, detonate it. And F, then after that, the master, you know, sort of takes over, and then he speaks to Zach, you know, saying, you know, we can truly be father and son now. But then Zach actually tries to talk to F, saying, if you're still in there, I want you to know I love you. Um, and I actually believe Zach there, so, you know, that's good, at least. At least he wasn't bullshitting like the other episode. Um... And Max Charles was actually okay in these scenes, I guess. Still not that great, but better than he has been. Um, and at first, uh, you know, then the Master just sort of pauses in F's body, and you can see for a few seconds, although F doesn't seem to be able to speak, there's still enough uh, strength and willpower within him to actually, you know, keep the Master still and sort of be able to hear what his son's saying, which I thought was good. Again, a moment I wish would have been uh, a little bit longer than it was, but at least there is that, I guess. Um, and y you see him smile, and I don't think I don't think that was meant to be like a master sinister smile. I think that was meant to be F actually still being able to smile, hearing that. And then they're you know push the detonator, and then you know there you go. Um, so again, I, I guess those final sequences and scenes it you know, did make sense for both F and Quinlan. Um, I just wish both of them had had sort of like longer scenes of that, you know, just to sort of put even more dialogue into it or something perhaps, and maybe more music, you know, like that slower music I love so much, I wish you know, there had been more of that, more dialogue, but again, I guess fitting conclusions um, really affected me, I'll admit I cried about the F thing especially, and I, you know, I, I was just uh, shell-shocked by what happened to Quinlan, but again, I, I sort of seen that coming for him, but still it was effective. And then we see a final sequence of, uh, you know, I found out that uh, Gus is going to the countryside, you know, helping refugees, likely meeting up with the, you know, girl and her family from season two that we had seen, you know, mentioned earlier this season again, which I thought was good. And we don't actually see her, but it's implied he probably does, you know, come across her again. Um, Roman survived, I guess, you know, yippee. <laughs> um, likeable guy, but, you know, really keep going. <laughs> Um, you know, he ends up being a big property owner, I guess, and apparently, uh, the humans are getting, like, six to seven hours of sun a day now, and it's growing, so that's good. <laughs> we see, of course, this group of people is still keeping Stregorian fucking labs, but as Fett narrates, you know, what could go wrong with that? You know, so, of course, they left a little window open there, but, you know, without any master, it w there'd probably be a bad incident eventually, but I don't think it would ever go as out of control as what the series was, but still stupid fucking people, but that's pro probably what would happen. Um, you know, we see, uh, um, Fat, you know, he's, I uh, went back to his rat catcher ways, which is nice, you know, to see how much he kind of missed it, you know, or the simplicity of it, I guess. Um, and, uh, Dutch, meanwhile, I'm glad Dutch survived as well. Um, you know, she's, uh, joined, like, this computer group, you know, hackers and everything to get the internet back on their feet, which is good, redeeming herself from her, uh, first initial uh, bad deed, you know, by breaking the internet at the beginning of the series, and then her and Fett meet up, which I thought was nice when they walk together, implying that they're, you know, they're probably able to mend things and probably have a relationship, you know, you know, for the rest of their lives or something, so, you know, not a bad ending, um, you know, we do, do you also hear Fett mention that, you know, there's no monument, no one knows who really, you know, sacrificed everything, um, but, you know, both Fett and Dutch know what, uh, F had done and everything. I just wish, again, there had been more moments, you know, saying goodbye to the F, the F character, I think, but, um, you know, again, just fitting ending, you know, as a whole, I guess. Um, I, I was fairly satisfied with it, I just, uh, heard, you know, heard a lot from it, but I guess that's a mark of a good show if it affects you like that. If I had to rate it, I'd rate it about, like, a 9.2, I guess. Um, I do think some things could have been a little bit longer than they were certain scenes. Um, you know, I think the fight between Quinlan and the Master could have been a little better. Um, but overall, a really, very fitting and very good ending for the show. Um, I, I am overall happy with it, and again, the strain. I'm gonna pick this up, it is kinda heavy, but I'm picking it up again anyway. <laughs> um, the strain, uh, minus the glare from the computer. Um, 
definitely one of my all-time favorite shows. Very, very overlooked. I would say the most overlooked and underrated show I've ever seen. Um, just an awesome show. I love every season. Um, I'll probably do videos later on. I plan on doing a video ranking my top ten episodes of the show as well as ranking the seasons. Maybe even characters. We'll see. Um, but yeah, let me know guys talk about the finale of The Strain. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, like, subscribe. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Can't believe it's over, man.